Hi folks, I'm Dr. Chapman. Today let's investigate Glacier National Park and learn about the amazing diversity of glacial landforms and the severe thrust belt. Glacier National Park is located in northwest Montana and borders Waterton Lakes National Park in Canada. Together, the two parks constitute the Waterton Glacier International Peace Park. Glacier National Park contains two continental divides that come together at Triple Divide Peak. Streams on the west side of the park drain into the Pacific Ocean, streams on the northeast drain into Hudson Bay, and streams in the southeast drain into the Gulf of Mexico. There were once about 250 glaciers in the park, but today there are around 25. Climate change models suggest that the glaciers will be effectively gone in the next 30 years. All of the remaining glaciers are tucked into cirques at the headwaters of valleys. Cirques are bowl-shaped depressions where a glacier has eroded and plucked out the rocks at the top of a valley, leaving behind steep cliffs on all sides that give the impression of being in an amphitheater. Free bird! Where two glaciers have eroded cirques back to back, they sometimes leave behind a thin knife-sharp ridge called an arete. Where three or more glaciers erode back to back, they can leave behind a horn. Meep, meep. Flinch Peak is a beautiful example of a glacially carved horn. Glacial erosion is generally much more effective than fluvial or stream erosion. While stream valleys have V-shaped profiles and cross-section, glacial erosion tends to widen and steepen valleys, resulting in a U-shaped profile. The larger the glacier, the bigger and deeper the U-shaped valley. When a glacier retreats, Retreat! it can leave behind a hanging valley that is stranded high up on a cliff face where a smaller glacier once flowed into a larger glacier. Birdwoman Falls is an example of a hanging valley that can be seen from going to the Sun Road. Glacial erosion is so effective it can over-deepen the bedrock and leave behind small tarn lakes or a fjord lake once the glacier retreats. Lake McDonald and St. Mary Lake are classic examples of elongated fjord lakes, also called finger lakes. Jazz hands! Tarns, which are smaller, more rounded glacial lakes, can be dammed by bedrock or by terminal moraines left behind as the glacier starts retreating. Along the course of a glacial valley, there may be many lakes connected by small streams. These are called Paternoster Lakes because the lakes and streams resemble rosary beads, especially when the sun is glistening off them. The chain of lakes on the hike up to Grinnell Glacier are some of the most iconic Paternoster Lakes. The sedimentary rocks that make up the high peaks and ridges in the park are part of the Belt Supergroup, which is Proterozoic in age, about 1.4 billion years old. Rocks of this age are rare in North America because most were eroded away by the Great Unconformity. Geologists think that the Belt Supergroup was deposited in a deep rift valley, like the modern Rio Grande Rift, which protected it from subsequent erosion. For me, the structural geology, or the geometry of the rocks at Glacier National Park, are even more fascinating than the ancient rocks and glacial landscapes. In contrast to the old Proterozoic rocks in the mountains, sedimentary rocks in the lowlands in the eastern and southern parts of the park are Cretaceous in age, about 70 million years old. This pattern is the exact opposite of what is expected. I don't have any expectations. If you watch the video on Grand Canyon National Park, you know that rocks usually get older as you go down in elevation or deeper into the earth. At Glacier National Park, the youngest rocks are at the lowest elevation. The reason there are old rocks above young rocks is because they were transported there by the Lewis Thrust Fault. A thrust fault is a type of reverse fault that has a low dip angle, sometimes even horizontal. The Lewis Thrust is part of the Greater Cordilleran Thrust Belt, which extends from northern Canada to southeast California. Thrust belts are just a collection of thrust faults and associated folds that collectively shorten the crust. The segment of the thrust belt in the U.S. is called the Severe Thrust Belt, and the mountain building event is called the Severe Orogeny named after the Severe River area in Utah. So severe. The Severe Thrust Belt was active from Jurassic to Eocene time, or about 200 to 50 million years ago. The specific timing of movement on the Lewis Thrust Fault is constrained by cross-cutting relationships. The Lewis Thrust cuts across volcanic rocks as old as 76 million years old, and sedimentary rocks that have fossils as young as 65 million years old. So we know the fault must have been active after these rocks were formed. In addition, the fault is intruded and cross-cut by an undeformed igneous dike that was dated at 59 million years old. So we know the fault was no longer active at that time. Altogether, we know the fault must have been active between 76 and 59 million years old. The severe thrust belt records up to about 400 kilometers of shortening, and the Lewis Thrust Fault itself transported rocks over 75 kilometers. The most famous place to see the Lewis Thrust Fault is at the base of Chief Mountain, south of Highway 17 in the northeast corner of the park. Chief Mountain is a remnant of the rocks above the Thrust Fault, while all the surrounding rocks were eroded away. 
This type of feature is called a klippa, the German word for cliff. The opposite type of feature is called a window, where erosion locally exposes the rocks beneath the thrust fault, and geologists can see through this window into the rocks below. One of the really cool things about the mountains in Glacier National Park is that they are all sitting above this relatively low angle Lewis thrust fault. If you were to drill a deep hole in the mountains in the park, you'd eventually pass through the old rugged Proterozoic rocks and into younger Cretaceous rocks. It's mind blowing. You can also imagine that over millions of years, or tens of millions of years, erosion will wear down the ruts and horns and ridges in the core of Glacier National Park until they look like Chief Mountain, little isolated remnants among the plains. And eventually these remnants will be gone, and all traces of the once majestic landscape will have washed away. Hey, thanks for watching. Check out some more videos and share them with friends and family. Take care.